Men of passion knitted together the vision of their dreams for freedom in the name of the land of pure. And then the best of them went further to defend the waters and the shores that dedicated the geographical realities of the dream so that the rest can have the privilege of this vision forever. They were no ordinary men, rather their hearts, minds and bodies were nothing but commitment to protect and the courage to do so infused in their veins. Measuring time, not in terms of dawns and dusks, but through their advancement in the direction they were following. And in their pursuit of sustaining excellence, they found a new friend called Ghazi in 1964. The best of the best men came forward and embraced submarine Ghazi, not as a deployment, but as a lifestyle. On their chests, they had not pinned a mere dolphin badge, but a magnificent medallion that only men of valor can adorn. It was an exclusive honor which, at that time, no one else in the region wore. Together as a team, Ghazi and the submariners sank deep in the sea only to swim the current of victory. From the pulsing control room of glowing red switches and ranks of dials, where every important order starts with Bismillah, these men sent out signals of strength and might, and the waves that caressed the hull of Ghazi gave a clear message to the enemies that anyone who will come our way will have to pay. The mere presence of submarine Ghazi was the reason enough to explain the absolute absence of naval adversaries. The fear it inflicted into the hearts was proverbial some 1400 years ago. Even damage at Davarka could never bring them out. With its signature gallantry, Team Ghazi made 1965 war a naval win. 8th September, always and forever. Pakistan Navy submarine service was a force to reckon with. Hangor, Shushak and Mangro were not just submarines or synonyms for dominators of aquatic world. They were the answers to the arguments posed on national sovereignty. Before we could celebrate the addition into the families, War of 1971 was knocking at the gates and so was the enemy's misfortune. Before the sailors could acquaint themselves with the linings of Daphne's, the war whistle was blown and so the men ventured into the unknown towards the unseen. The waters were new, the Daphne's were new, and the only thing old that the men could hold was the unremitting resolve. If we go down, we go down all, and if we come up, we come up all. The submarine fleet on the eve of 71 war had four submarines and submarine Ghazi was the one with most endurance so it was sent thousands of miles away to counter Indian Navy aircraft carrier Vikrant. Amidst prayers and wishes, Ghazi sailed to hostile waters. Indian aircraft carrier Vikrant was at Vishakapatnam and the place had a history. Haunted by the past, the naval strategists on the other side moved the carrier to Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Ghazi was ordered 
to mine the area to target Vikrant on her return. Men like Commander Zafar and Executive Officer Lieutenant Commander Pervez Hamid were leading their sailors during an offensive mining operation when Ghazi, along with 93 people on board, embraced Shahad. Mine number 16. Prepare to your cover one is mine number 16. Distance to launching position. 400 meters to go, sir. Weapon out, sir. Open tube number one with mine number 16. Tube number one, short to, sir. Tube number one, Bismillah, short. Bismillah, short. Besides the nameplate, memories of success and higher standards of sacrifice, Ghazi left behind the notion that the love of motherland surpasses everything. Most trivial of it all is the love for own self. Those left behind didn't mourn because the salinity speaks that the sea had shed enough tears. Ghazi was a story of fortitude and chivalry but the sea and the story go a long way together. Amongst the waves, another epic was shaping up. Okay. Exo will go like this. PN submarine Hangor detected Indian naval ships Kukri and Kirpan on the evening of the 9th of December 1971. The two ships were searching the area for the submarine. Sound action sections. Okay, so now do we have any contact? Affirmative, sir. We have two Probably contact, they had not known that there are only two types of ships, submarines and targets. Lieutenant Fasi Bukhari and Lieutenant Commander Abedullah Khan got down on their charts and confirmed the position of Indian naval ships Kukri and Kirpan. They finally had a chance to take on the enemy head on. They under the valiant command of Commander Ahmed Tasneem, then decided to settle the score. Weapon officer, create engagement for contact, Bravo. Silently, they slipped into the anonymity of water, and the water kept their secret too. Sonar operator, keep tracking both the contacts. Instead of chasing the targets and giving a sonar signature, the attack team waited and tracked the two targets as they gradually got in range. We have two contacts in the table, contact Alpha and contact Bravo. Okay, I'll take this code block. Hello, get ready. I'm going to the score block now. Bearing now, bearing 015, sir. Okay, this is Indian ship, Kukri. Roger, hang on the power, starboard 50, range 7500. Hello, confirm, take it. Six seconds completed, sir. Okay, score. Down, score. Okay, confirm, you have got both the contacts. Confirm, sir, take it. Okay, very good. Team number one and two ready, we're going to torpedo each sir. Very good. Final bearing. Final bearing alpha. Alpha bearing 3555. Bismillah, Irakbar, Irahim. Shoot. Bismillah, Irakbar. Three minutes to 8 pm, the first torpedo was fired at Indian Navy ship Kirpan. It ran but failed to explode. Kirpan, hey. Torpedo lost the target, sir. Okay, no problems. Now prepare tube number two for contact alpha again. Tube contact number two ready for contact alpha, sir. Get the final bearing. Hurry up. Alpha bearing 355. Five. Okay, final bearing 355. Five. Weapon officer, Bismillah. Shoot. The attack team quickly fired a second torpedo on the other Indian Navy ship Kukri. After the pause, there was nothing but anxiety. Torpedo under the target, sir. Loud bang was heard. Confirm it. Torpedo hit the target, sir. Yeah. The torpedo 
had exploded under the ship's magazine at 8 p.m. Kukri took two minutes to go down. With 18 officers and 176 sailors aboard, Indian Navy ship Kukri is the most costly wartime Indian casualty. The epic had been written. BN Submarine Hangor was the first submarine to have sunk a ship after the Second World War. Indian Navy ship Kirpan attempted to engage Hangor, but against all odds, Hangor charged and attacked Kirpan, firing a third torpedo locked onto its tail. Kirpan disengaged, increased her speed, but could not get too far. It was badly damaged and crippled. Hangor disengaged and evaded the Indian Navy fleet. For four days, Indian Navy ships depth charged the sea, but the luck chose to favor the brave. On the 13th of December 1971, Hangor proudly returned home to become the pride of the nation. Life at submarines is not just life, it's a never ending adventure. The people who board the submarine once just never get off board. They only fade away. It smells awful. It's lethally introvert and sounds impossible to live through. But as time passes and the submariner master their craft, the strong keel of their relationship is laid. They live without spoons, showers, open spaces, communication, and most of all, the sun. There are no fresh foods and even oxygen is hard to get. These men don't believe in the rituals of ranks but in the essence of trust and camaraderie, knowing that there will always be somebody out there to whom they can trust. But most important of being that one who can be trusted upon. For everyone under the sea, safety of the ship is more important than the prejudice of rank. They live with the sound of the sea, for this is the point where the senses merge and the hearing becomes seeing. It is something close to having a drop of seawater outside the boat, making it into their cup in the wardroom. Cemented by water and nurtured by time, these associations then graduate to the point that the submarine starts talking to the submariner. Those who can listen to it are the true worthy keepers of this dolphin. Solitude becomes their partner. The Lady Daphne knows of their isolation, coffin dreams, phobias, longing for families and friends, but most notably of their love for the homeland, the yearning which keeps them going. All those things that define the life are missing from a submarine, but it's the dedicated soul of the submariners that pushes them towards life, a happy and prosperous life they secure for their countrymen. Spirit of men and those who were lived by the will to do more than usual is an intricate matter. They continue to train each other, learning how to survive when there is a dearth of resources and how to live with the lesser opportunities, yet making it with dignity. The family was growing. Another Daphne-class submarine had joined and was named Ghazi, a reference to glorious past. The proud moment came when they were self-reliant and they could assemble, refit without any assistance. 
the slogan that keeps them running that their submarine service was the first equipped, better equipped and still the best. They have walked the extra miles in building bonds that were permanent in nature and true in their essence and manifestation, winning allies who can stand through the waters of test. The world of highly competent, dependable, well-bonded men. Submarine wars is and will be the life of these men. They don't call it second marriage, but their first marriage. They're all equally important, from skipper to sanitary worker. For they all make a family, a family of people who serve in silence, but in their silence, their hair giggles of fellow comrades. Indigenization came next, and then it came at many levels, thereby saving national resources and lessening burden on exchequer. One after the other, the Augusta-class submarines Hashmat, Urmat, Khalid, Saad and Hamza joined the Distinguished League. A service where they care enough about each other and all others so that the defense of the state remains impregnable. All these years, they have managed to sail smoothly and safely. The journey of survival that started with a tiny step is now the road to excellence trekked in leaps and bounds. While the submarine service has stepped into the other half of the century, her resolve awe inspires billions. They owe their existence to each other. The submarine is glorified because of the submariners, and the submariners are heroes because they belong to the submarine. They are the first to enter the war front, but last to leave. Remain on scene, but unseen. Stretched to the limit is the submariner, and designed to perfection is the submarine. But worthy is the passion that connects the two. I am that passion. Permission to lower the scope. Sir, 